In case you miss it, here's a sports animal rewind. Tonight, it's Tennessee hosting Florida. Game will be on ESPN 9 o'clock. I'm Vince Ferrar alongside Brendan Quinn. Someone that will be on the call, a color analyst, does a fantastic job. Be partnered with Brad, uh, Brad Nessler tonight at Thompson Bowling Arena. Jimmy Dykes, ESPN analyst, joins us. Hey, Jimmy, Vince, and Brendan, good morning. Jimmy, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Well, we appreciate it. It's our pleasure to talk to you. Um, tonight, uh, before we get into the Florida Gators and some of the key parts of the, the matchup, uh, I want to get your perspective on Tennessee during this stretch, this five-game winning streak. What, what are you seeing in, in, from Tennessee during this terrific play as of late? Well, they've gone with four guards on the floor a lot, which has opened things up for Stokes, and you know, they're really scoring. They, they, they really struggled and labored to score you know, the first half of the season, and it was kind of at times brutal to watch. They had to just <laughs> drive the ball at times in hope of getting fouled, get the ball up on the rim, get an offensive rebound. But, you know, they're they're, they're making shots. They're confident. Uh, you know, Kondo has pushed all the right buttons with his team. And I think Stokes and Trey Golden have been the key all season long, and I think they kind of fought the coaching staff a little bit maybe early and were completely buying in what everything that the, the balls needed those two guys to do. But whether – really playing well now, and Tennessee has fought their way into a spot where a win tonight, I think they are, they, they are, they become a very hot topic for an at-large candidate. Yeah. Jimmy, you, you mentioned the, the, the changes in the offense itself, going, going to four guards, and uh, as kind of an XO guy, you, you watch film, can you get, kind of explain to people how, the, just the differences that it makes, just in terms of being able to get into up-tempo play a little bit more, and especially just the spacing on offense that you see. There's just so many of the jumpers that they're now hitting are just so much more open than they were throughout long stretches of the season. Well, a lot of that's due to the fact that you drive the ball with a four-guard set and you're putting pressure on the defense to have to help down and help down on those drives. So now your kick-out passes are, are you know, more, more open. Guys have more room and rhythm into their jump shot. I think you're seeing that. I think you're seeing the help off of Darnell Stokes is not as close to him as it used to be. You know, John Maimon was the, in keeping the double team off of Stokes last year, and now this four guard lineup is the key to keeping the double team off of him. So I mean, he's a he's a double double every time he walks off the floor and you know, to push the right buttons of the coach. A lot of coaches can see the problem, but they can't fix the problem, and only only the best coaches see it and fix it, and I think Conzo Martin's one of the best coaches in the game. I, I love everything about that guy, and they, uh, they they certainly have found a way to put their team in the best position to win. And I expect Thompson Bowling to be off the charts tonight at, at the tip, considering that it is Florida, national TV, a win, uh, puts them, I, I think, just right there within that last three or four spots of making the NCAA tournament as of today. It's a huge game a huge opportunity for Tennessee so, so let's talk a little bit about Florida then it obviously depth is now a, even more of an issue you get was already out now Michael Frazier's out um they're gonna need some guys to to step up how, how do you kind of view them right now in terms of exp- expanding what is now whittled down to a six-man rotation well you're gonna have to go with another guy or two you know you can't you can't go in a ball game playing six I think you can with seven it might change a little bit how Florida plays. You might see more zone out of Florida on the road, um, especially against the lineup that Tennessee's been putting on on the floor. That's a that's a lineup that can that can burn you from the outside. So, you know, Florida has their hands full, but Florida is built to win the entire thing. I think they're 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 that good of a club, especially when they're healthy. They couldn't win it right now without getting a Frazier, but they get those two guys back. I like their chances to win the national championship about as much as anybody out there because they they move the ball at such a high rate. Uh, they get multiple sides of the floor about every possession. They get four or five different guys to touch it about every possession. Uh, they, they can score from all five spots. That's one thing you have to be concerned with tonight. Uh, it, they're, not, they're not down a starter. And those starting five guys are really, really good. And those starting five guys can all – make three or four baskets in a row. And those starting five guys are ranked in the top five in offensive efficiency for a reason. So although Florida might be down a little bit, it's going to take Tennessee's best effort to win this game. 
Joined by ESPN analyst Jimmy Dykes will be the analyst tonight with Brad Nessler on the call on ESPN. Vince Ferrar, Brendan Quinn here on the new Sentinel Sports page. Jimmy, when Florida has lost on the road this year, what have you seen? Has it been the opponent playing well in its home court? Has it been Florida? Has it been X's and O's? What have you seen when Florida's lost on the road? Well, probably a little bit of everything. You know, at Missouri last week, you know, they had no inside presence. Patrick Young only got four shots in the ball game. He played 25, 26 minutes, and you can't win on the road if you can't throw the ball inside on the box and score. They fell in love with the three. They took 33 three-point shots. I don't expect that to be uh, the, the case tonight. I think they understand that you can't win a, a quality game on the road like that. So and then at Arkansas, they just ran into a, a, a buzzsaw of a team at home. I mean, Arkansas is as good as anybody in the country on their home floor, not just in the SEC. You know, they, they blitz people in that building, and Florida wasn't ready for it. So, you know, every, every team out there has their – has their issues right now from Indiana to Florida to Georgetown to Louisville to, to whoever. No, no team is invincible, and, and uh, you know, Florida's the same way. But I don't think it's been any one thing. Uh, they, they've, they've only suffered a couple of losses right now in the SEC, and Missouri is an NCAA tournament team, and they took them down in the last minute. And, and like I said, Arkansas, just they would have beaten anybody in the country in Bud Walton that day. So, Florida's okay. They're, they're, they come in stung a little bit because of injuries, but it's not like there's a magic formula that, that we all know how to beat Florida now on the road. So You mentioned the three-point shooting. You know, you're talking about a team that shoots 40% from the arc and 40% of their points come from beyond the arc. So if they're not going to be able to be overly reliant on the three-point shot on the road, especially what the atmosphere will be like tonight – what what do they need to do? What should what should kind of Vol fans look f- to see what they're doing well that that would kind of offset that? Well, are, are they able to throw the ball inside to Patrick Young? Are they able to get the ball inside to Eric Murphy? I mean, he's a he's a shooting four, but he can also score inside. And uh, are they able to drive the ball inside and get baskets around the rim? So I, I think any any in any form or combination of Florida scoring within six or eight feet of the bucket is huge for Florida tonight. And it's not going to just be a simple throw the ball inside to Patrick Young. He has it back to his guy. And he makes a move and shoots a jump hook. It's going to be some different forms of that. And if, if they have enough of that balance in their offense, then that, that's when Florida's at their best. Jimmy Dykes joining us here on the new Sentinel Sports page. Jimmy, talk about Jarno Stokes' game, how it's evolved and improved throughout the season from what you've seen. Well, I think he's finally you know, bought into what Kanz has been telling him all along, that he's a college inside power guy he's not a face-up perimeter guy and so he's using his big body down there like he's supposed to and he's carving up has great hands he's he has a knack to score below the rim he's not an explosive guy above the rim so he relies on his power his lower body strength and he's gotten better at posting up for a big kid i think he got knocked off of his position too easily the first certainly last year as a freshman in the first couple of months this year but i think he's got a better understanding of a of a broad base, not bending over his waist so much. And I just think he feels good about where he is as a player right now, and he's confident and comfortable at the spot he's on the floor, which is the key for any player. A couple follow-ups on that, Jimmy. Conzo Martin earlier in this year went to the SEC and and asked them to look at the way they were officiating. From your experience working with the league, do you think that could have had any impact on what has happened since then? Because he hasn't really gotten in as much foul trouble since. Well, I don't, I don't think any of us will know that, but, uh, you know, if you just look at from that point on, he's been on the floor a lot more, and I, I think our officials do a great job. They had a, had a hard night last night in Ames, Iowa, but I think overall they do a ter- terrific job of using common sense and adjusting to the game and watching game tape, and you know, those guys watch a lot of game tape as well, and, and they're, they're, they'll be the first to realize are they penalizing a, a kid or a style quicker than anybody else so i think the officials they, they they grow with the game during the course of the year just like the Dubs, and they they probably have seen some things from tennessee and jarnell stokes that made them realize this is a big old strong kid and we can't penalize him for his size how do you think uh, florida will will defend uh, jarnell stokes tonight well they got a pretty big strong kid himself and patrick young you know he's pound for pound Stronger than Jarnell Stokes. Uh, Stokes may have a few pounds on him, but that'll be a great matchup. 
you know that those are two those are two football tight ends in the SEC going at it tonight on the inside. And like I said, I I, I think Florida will play some zone. I haven't watched some practice yet. I went noon today and have a feel for it, but that, that would not that would not surprise me at all because they're being down in numbers. They need to protect Patrick Young from foul trouble. And the flag, and Florida plays a really good zone. Like they put one in on the plane ride up last night. They they play a really good zone. Mm-hmm. Real quick, actually, as a follow up to that, what, what zone do they do they play? Have you actually have you seen them have the most success with? Is it one three one two three? Do they trap no, or no, how, how do they play? Yeah, it's standard. It's just standard two three zone. Okay. But very very quick with it. Very good ball movement. People movement. Uh, there. That's a, it's a very fast and quick. Own defense by Florida. Okay, but <clears throat> just looking at the SEC as a whole, Florida obviously has a two-game cushion up top there, followed by Kentucky, Alabama, then Ole Miss, Mizzou, Arkansas, Tennessee. So, h- how do you kind of see these last couple weeks maybe shaking out? You know, what teams have the momentum? How, how do you kind of see this thing before we, you know, shaking out before we go to Nashville? Well, Florida and Missouri are now just playing for where they're going to be seated in the NCAA tournament. They're they're in great shape. Uh, after that, it's, it's it's a toss-up. I don't think any other team right now would feel confident that their name would be called on Selection Sunday as of today. Um, Ole Miss probably leads the group right on their heels or right there with them is Kentucky, right behind is Tennessee, Arkansas, and then Alabama. So those those five teams I see are fighting for the right now to be an at-large team, and they all have an opportunity for Tennessee – you couldn't you couldn't ask to be in a better situation than where Tennessee is right now in terms of being a at large team to have a number four, six team in the country on your home floor tonight and Missouri coming in here next week. The two teams that can give you the eye resume wins are on your home floor the next Tuesday nights. Uh, so if any of those teams have an advantage schedule wise, it's Tennessee. They have the opportunity. Now it's up to them to take advantage of it. Jimmy Dykes will be on the uh, on the call tonight on ESPN alongside Brad Nessler. Does a great job. Uh, Jimmy, really appreciate your insights. Thanks so much for coming on. Hey, guys. With us. Thanks, Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. That is Jimmy Dykes. Nice enough to join us.